Right. I'm quite excited about this. So I was thinking yesterday, I think I was messing around with the Axe FX a couple of days ago and there's this sequencer kind of preset on it which was changing pitch and stuff and I thought well, we can't really do anything exactly the same as that in Helix but we could do something pretty cool with these pitch echoes, right? So I was quite excited about this because this is something that I've not really, I don't know, let me know in the comments if someone's done this before, but it's one of those things which I think there's a load of potential here, um, which is possibly quite underdeveloped, is that a word that we could use for this? Anyway, so here's the concept. We're going to take four pitch echoes and run them into a dual delay, so I'll just show you the dual delay settings first, so we've got an eighth, an eighth dotted, 66% left feedback, 66% right, and then left mix and right mix at 26%, and the mods are off. Then we got a reverse delay, so this is to add some kind of ambience to it as well. Um, both of those blocks are stereo, by the way. The reverse delay is eighth dotted, 50% feedback, low cut, high cut off, and it's 25%. The vibrato mod is on, but quite slow. Then we're going into an LA Studio compressor. Now this is because there's no amp in this, so without this you get kind of a bit of a quieter thing. So I'm using the LA Studio compressor to kind of bring level up and, you know, squash it down a little bit. Um, that's just with stock settings. And then we're going into the dynamic plate with the decay at 12.1 seconds, pre-delay at 10 milliseconds, damping at 12.2, and the mix at 16%. I tried turning that up a bit higher, but I found that actually this preset, to me, sounded a little better with a, a lower reverb mix, and maybe even none. Anyway, so I, to me it sounds like basically like a harp player. I started building this in Helix Native actually. What we're doing is adding mono um, pitch echoes, right? And I've set up the time for the first one as a quarter note. Feedback zero, so you only get one hit. And then the interval here, minus two. Mix 40%. So that's kind of that one. Then this one here, I've moved on to path B. You press action and move it down to path B. The time here is a quarter note dotted. So you see this is a quarter note. This one's slightly longer, so this would be the second hit, I think. Um, the interval minus five. So if I just get rid of these one at a time, you'll hear better what's going on. So you've got one. So that's just dropping down in pitch, right? Then this one, we get a down again and if I just got rid of that one you'd have okay and then I think this is next so this one we're going up plus two so you get down um, so what the pitch is actually doing is down two and then down five to that and then back up to two above, right? Um, and then last of all, we got this half note dotted to minus nine, which I think is like an E in this key, right? Uh, so, oh no, it's an A. No, it'd be a D, and then I think you're also hearing another echo. Um, so these kind of echoes run into each other as well, so you get a little bit more than... So that's literally what I thought 
is kind of a cool idea. And then via snapshot, so if you press in the interval and then start turning, you can change per snapshot. So I've got like a, this is the minor version, so you've got like a... Anything that we play here will sound minor. So what I would suggest doing, like theory-wise, say you were playing in A minor, you could play an A and play a D. And that would work quite nicely. Then what I did was this one stays at minus five, this one goes to minus three, this one goes to minus eight, and this one goes to plus two. So then, it's like a, more major. So you could play that like on a D, if we are, if we were playing in D, play it on the D, and play it on the G. And then, as you hear there, I move to the B, which should be more of a minor sound in D major. But it's got like a major sound to it, right? Um, so without the actual pitches, it's going. Something like that, right? And then I've got an even vaguer. I decided to put together something which is a little bit more vague is what I would describe it as, a bit more open. So you could sort of play. Your one, four, five, six, maybe even two. Yeah, two as well. So you've got a bit more possibility on snapshot three so that's minus five plus seven plus twelve and plus seven again and it works best if you play single notes into it because the pitch echo is not actually poly if you listen it gets a little bit glitchy right Although that does have an interesting sound. Yeah, so I would suggest playing single notes. Also, what I just found was doing this kind of thing. To me, that's just a really beautiful sound. Um, so you could equally do something like this. So this could sound pretty cool as well. Let's try sending the left. So this is B, this is going to the right now, 70, and this is A, the top line, that's going to the left, 70. You should get a cool sound.
I don't know about you, but that's something that I find quite exciting. And so you're probably going to see me messing around with this a little bit more. Um, that's kind of the concept, turning your helix into a harp kind of thing. With the full helix, I imagine I could do some even cooler things because you could do basically two times the amount of this, right? So you could have a bigger kind of pitch array. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that. You could run this on the HX effect, on the helix, on the HX stomp, obviously, or helix native. Let me know if you want me to drop this into the folder. And again, let me know if you've seen someone else doing something like this. I'm not sure if I have, um, but that idea of running a volume knob as well, just to... I'll catch you in another video soon. I just wanted to share that with you as I was quite excited about it as a concept. Catch you later.